I only explored a quarter of the Navajo Nation so far. And there's so much more to see and so much more I got to educate people on and even educate myself. That's that's the main main part of this journey is educating myself first. And then when I'm ready, I can start sending that knowledge out. This is the Adventure Sports Podcast brought to you by 180 TAC. Get out there and have some fun. So there's this new backpacking food company called Peak Refuel. And honestly, I, I gave them a shot for my last backpacking trip. Y'all, it was literally the best backpacking food I've ever had in my life. I was so impressed by them that I wanted to reach out and get a deal for our listeners. So if you keep listening to the episode, I'll tell you how to save 20% off an order with them. But until then, here's the episode. Vernon Key is a freelance graphic designer who is traveling around the Navajo Nation for six months. He is Dene, or Navajo, so he's learning about his people, his childhood, where he comes from, and his ultimate goal is to be a guide in that area to help people access an area of the country that is awesome, but very few people get really deep access into. So I hope you enjoy the episode. Let us know what you think. You can always give us a call and leave us a voicemail at 812 mail pod. All right, here's the episode. Welcome to the show today. I have Vernon Key. Vernon, thanks for coming on the show. Yeah, yeah, no problem. Yeah, man. And so you are a uh, you're a US Marine Corps vet? Yes. Um you're a Dene, which is also known as as a Navajo. Yes. Um you're from the Four Corners area, graphic designer. Um, you went to an art school in San Diego, right? Yeah, I went to the Art Institute over in San Diego. Cool. And now you do like graphic designing with like an indigenous native, true native influence, not like this faux stuff that people are making all the time now. You're an outdoor enthusiast, typographer, and I've looked at your art, man. You're you're pretty talented. Oh yeah, thank you, thank you. Yeah, it's uh something that I use as more of a meditation technique. Typography is just very, uh, yeah, it calms me down. I focus on the letters. I uh, really uh, get really into it. That's awesome, man. So why don't you just go ahead and tell us a little bit about your background, like where you're from and what that was like. Okay, yeah. So right now I'm currently on the Navajo Nation and been here for about like six months now, traveling around, exploring these places and just showing a little bit more more awareness to people that uh, these places are sacred and should be protected. So I've been <clears throat> educating people through social media and through my artwork and just anybody who wants to listen, really talking about uh, my uh, culture and what the land means to me. So that's what I've been up to these days. But I grew up on, on the Navajo Nation and grew up in the boarding school life which uh, wasn't too great, but I got through it and ended up going to high school here in New Mexico at Kirtland Central, and uh, which was really good. I got to live with my parents for a while, but uh, alcohol did run in my family, so it was a little bit of a uh, traumatizing moments through my life at that time. But I got through that and didn't know really what to do after uh struggling with college i think i flunked out and worked at a few jobs here and there until my best friend ended up going into the marine corps and told me all about it and completely undersold the whole the whole thing and <laughs> so i signed up and well it was an awakening for me not not only that it actually helped me become a man and actually give me the courage to do a lot of these things i'm doing now which lately i've been kind of transitioning everything I learned from the military to this outdoor life and and, uh, in my pursuit to actually become some sort of outdoor guide. So since I got out of the Marine Corps, I went to uh, the Art Institute of San Diego and kind of needed some time to just figure out what to do, like find a career. And I thought using my art and my background and any type of art I could do. I could sketch, I could paint. So I figured this was 
something I could do. And I excelled. I did pretty well there. And but unfortunately, uh, the work there wasn't what I was looking for or really didn't work out for me. So after spending about eight years in San Diego, just getting way too comfortable with life there. And I needed something, something different because a lot of my past was kind of still bothering me, still haunting me. So I just uh, needed to get away. I, I started going out into the to the local trails. I started hanging around uh, the Pacific Crest Trail mainly. I, I probably probably hiked the whole southern part of it near San Diego since I've been there. And uh, finally started connecting with these organizations in the outdoors, like Outward Bound. I went on a few of their trips and got to used to high high alpine hiking again i started loving camping again so i kept reaching out to these organizations in any way i could i could uh get involved maybe using my graphic design or just helping any way i could or volunteering and uh this great company natives outdoors reached out to me and doing some of their design works which really kicked off this whole career choice in in the outdoor industry I, i am pursuing so it really uh gave me new life and i've been working with them and working with indigenous uh brands and companies and using what i've learned in san diego and bringing it back to the homeland and and helping my people any way i can not with just my graphic design but with uh, what I'm learning in the outdoors now. I've been working a lot with Sierra Club, the military outdoors program, and using uh, those techniques I've learned in the military and, and transitioning that and safely leading people into the outdoors. So that's been very helpful to me. And I've just been on this great path of helping people and spreading my knowledge as much as I can. That's awesome. That's that, Yeah, you, you unpacked a lot there. You mentioned Native Outdoors. I've never heard of that before researching you. Could you tell us about like what is what is Native Outdoors? So Native Outdoors are they were originally based out of there, actually Denver, Colorado. The CEO Len Nesifer, he's actually lived there for quite some time, but but he moved down to Tucson. So uh actually based based out of Tucson now. So <laughs> That's a good place too though. Oh yeah. It's uh, I hear it's wonderful. I can't wait to head on down there after <laughs> the snow kind of comes in here. <laughs> I don't think I could take it. So I'm kind of going to be going south more. But yeah, uh, Native Outdoors, it's a <clears throat> indigenous owned company and we're helping to promote indigenous athletes and inspiring the youth and the community to, you know, get outdoors and live a little healthier lifestyle and get back to your roots and mother nature. So that's uh, what the company is about. And now uh, we're starting to get more involved with clothing and promoting that. Like I, I think we're going to be coming out with some really great beanies for the winter that I designed. So it's really great that uh, we're pushing into the show that there's indigenous people that are in the outdoor industry too. Man, so do you do you prefer the term indigenous over native? I uh, yeah, I definitely prefer that natives. It's just like many words were set upon us, so. I figure I, I think it sounds better. <laughs> okay. Know. Yeah. No, I, I, it's, I'm a white guy, you know, there's, <laughs> you're surrounded by them in the outdoor industry, man. <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah. I've had some indigenous friends in college that lived on reservations out West in school. And both of their families were pretty heavily involved with alcoholic alcoholism. Uh, we related because so is my my family filled with alcoholics and living on a reservation growing up in one is that stigma true for the most part? Yeah, for the most part, I've I've uh, when I was in the military, I had indigenous friends that from other tribes, so they pretty much told their stories of what their reservations were like, and it's all very similar. They're all being plagued by alcohol, and now it's now it's like hard drugs, like meth is being hitting these reservations pretty hard so it's yeah. a lot of poverty and a lot of uh yeah it's it, it's just pretty sad just to hear about it but once you see it yeah it's it's heartbreaking too is it hard to get out of it uh i think so yeah it's just because there's not many like stable jobs on the reservation usually so people usually 
go leave the reservation and go to these cities and nobody really comes back. So once they get that chance to go, you know, live living a better life. But some do come back and it's really great to see that some people make a difference when they do come back. It sounds like you go back quite a bit. Is that something you enjoy doing or is that something you feel like you have to do? Uh, actually, in the beginning, when I joined the military, I was actually getting away. I was actually running away. I was in the right mindset and I just needed to leave this place and which was a different life now, but I've realized that that was the wrong move, but uh, now I'm back and I'm trying to trying to make a difference any way I can. If it's teaming with teaming up with indigenous companies or doing, doing it on my own, I, I don't know. I'm just kind of in this place where uh, all my problems are kind of been slowly pretty much getting going away from me and leave it. I'm leaving them behind thanks to the mother nature and all these people have been helping me along the way and going on these outings. Cause when I'm out there, it's just, it's just like, I have, I have no thought. I have no, no emotion. It's just me and mother nature. We're, we're just walking together. She's showing me these beautiful places that, uh, that are healing. Absolutely, man. I, isn't it awesome just being out there? Oh yeah. Yeah. Like, Recently, I was just uh, with the Sierra Club Military Outdoors. We went to Maine to do the 100-mile wilderness trail on the Appalachian Trail. And immediately meeting other veterans is always a great thing and because you never lose that camaraderie and that brothership. So immediately we started getting along and then just adding the, the surrounding, the leaves, the trees. Everything was just so mind-blowing. I, I couldn't even remember what was bothering me all those years. Why I turned to drugs, I don't even remember like that person anymore. Like I yeah. was, I was living a whole new life for like ten days on this trail. I was just, it was amazing, very, uh, very healing. So I learned a lot every time I go out there and uh, see these different places. I just take something from it and try to work with it. So like I said before, Peak Refuel is a new company making freeze-dried food. And it's literally the best freeze-dried meals I've ever had. You can use it for backpacking, camping, hunting, whatever you want to use it for. And these folks are the real deal. They spent over two years researching the market and creating the perfect recipes. And it is just absolutely awesome. I used the meals on my last guided trip. And the people on the trip could not even believe that it was freeze-dried food. Literally, you put a cup of water in it. It's like a cup or a cup and a half. It's, it's not very much water, and it tastes like it came from a restaurant. That's how good it is. If you're interested in ordering some yourself, you can get 20% off by going to peakrefuel.com and use ASP20 at checkout. I encourage you, go get some, try it for yourself. It's amazing. So you say when you went to San Diego, you would use the trails and the scenery there as a refuge to kind of get away. Was that something you did growing up or did you just discover it when you were in college there? Oh, yeah. When I when I was growing up on the weekends, when I come back from the boarding school, I would have to look over to a livestock for my grandma, who I lived with at the time. And uh, so I was out there pretty much every day. And even when I was at boarding school, I, I didn't get to get along with the kids too well. So I would just leave and the wild is just <laughs> 100 feet away across the road is uh, mountains and canyons. So I would just, you know, head out down there and spend 30 minutes alone then come back. So nobody would, would know I was gone. <laughs> yeah. As a kid, I, I did spend a lot of time in the outdoors and it was just a full place to get away get away from all the stuff that was going on because uh my uncles they were alcoholics too so that stuff was happening at my grandma's as well not only in my with my father too but it just ran through my whole family and uh that was kind of a place where i could just get away and just just hang out and have fun <laughs> you know it is it was, a, it was a playground pretty much yeah yeah that's funny man because a lot of kids don't i've taken a lot of like kids out in, in the on trips. I was going to say in the woods, that just sounds weird, but a lot of kids yeah. on trips and <laughs> man, they just don't, they don't care. It's like, they don't appreciate, they want to go play like mini golf or something, but you take, I take adults 
and they like understand the break from from the city and from normal life to have out there and uh it's pretty cool that you started experiencing that early on uh, you know I, I mean i can't tell you how much that resonates to just have to have that as a refuge so so what is what's the general feel of the outdoors on the reservation is it appreciated is it something that's uh, taken advantage of or is it something that that's kind of on the back of everyone's mind it's kind of a uh, like half and half really like you can't just can't just camp anywhere uh it's pretty much we have camping spots all over too um i know there's uh no climbing on the reservation so that was uh i think a step back a while because people were just like climbing the monument valley um, climbing ship rock uh back in the day so i guess i think that's outlawed now but yeah the outdoor industry is kind of uh not very known here really but we are the outdoors. <laughs> yeah. We live it every day. So mm. it, it doesn't really be set upon people. You know, a lot of, a lot of, a lot of these people don't live electricity or, um, uh, they have to build a fire every night. They live off the livestock. So that's pretty much better than camping. I think <laughs> like, yeah, it's a lifestyle. That's not like you're not a weekend warrior. Yeah. That's you're doing it for your whole life. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So yeah, but it would be great to, to uh bring that bring the industry here and have them know that you know we're we're just as big into the outdoor industry as you are why why can't we get some help and make a difference here? what kind of help are you foreseeing uh you know like when i spent time in denver oh gosh that place is an outdoor city <laughs> it's crazy isn't like, it it's so crazy you got a river going through there with people boating all the time 24 7 it's, it's an amazing city and the mountains are just right there and all these companies are there like north face and all these people that i saw there were moving there and why not uh bring something down here <laughs> it'll be a great uh opportunity to you know show these people that uh you care not only with i know like some of these companies do support like what's been going on with like bears ears and and uh these bigger issues but i really am focused on the youth and uh that's what i've been doing just focusing on the youth and their the next generation to come I, i've already seen that uh it's it's already fading um none of these kids really pay attention to what's going on on the reservation now so they're too into this technology <laughs> age so yeah but yeah <laughs> do you think uh you think the outdoor industry overlooks indigenous people then yeah because of uh the the poverty and there's no there's nothing really to build on here like what they could like in denver or these big cities and it's, it's easier to promote those things than uh putting a north face store in shiprock or something right, <laughs> you know, right i don't think that would look too good no so, it's not where the money they got to follow money man the businesses they they're their businesses first unfortunately and not all of them yeah but a lot of the big ones that's how they get big you know they got to focus on money and it kind of sucks because mm -hmm. you know a lot of, there's got to be a lot of compromise to get that big but i haven't seen a lot of great uh great people are doing great things and uh setting an impact in the outdoor industry so i see a, a better future now i think i've been to outdoor retail like twice i think yeah and setting indigenous presence there and getting bigger companies evolved to what we're doing has been uh pretty awesome to see actually that's awesome. And so what would you like to see programs implemented like on the reservations? Is that your, kind of what you have in mind? Yeah, definitely. Like uh, recently, I just went up to a lake that I visited when I was a kid. My uncle uh, worked with the youth and he would set up trips to go camping on the weekends, like uh, boating, you know, all these outdoor activities. So he invited, he picked me up from my grandmother's and we went up to the uh, Bowl Lake and there's a camp asahi up there and it was really great like it had everything for a kid to have fun and spend time in the outdoors and the cabins were like the front was open so it just had bunks in there so you could spend <laughs> like you're camping outside pretty much and i went over there last about last week and it's all shut down um there's there was like nobody there <laughs> but oh really yeah uh i i haven't looked into it yet but 
you know, just places, not, not just that. I even visited my old boarding school because back then we had uh, programs that helped the youth go outdoors, like paintballing on the weekend or uh, rappelling off these cliffs because some of us didn't have uh, rides to go home on the weekend or somebody to pick us up. Yeah, yeah. So we would have to stay at the boarding school all weekend. And so some some people started these programs for us. I went there again to see, just to see if I could uh, help any way I can, really. Just off of the knowledge I knew uh, in being out in the outdoors. And I drove up to the boarding school and I thought it was shut down. It was so run down. There was no grass anymore, no football field. And I really thought it was shut down. I, uh, I kind of was just looking around. And uh, as I was leaving, uh, workers started, employees started coming out and kids started coming out like, wow, they're still running this place and they're not even running these programs anymore. Or, and it's just gotten pretty bad. The school has gotten pretty bad now. Oh, so it was still in operation, but it was like, yeah, it was pretty run down. Dang, man. Yeah, it's pretty run down now. And, and, uh, I just felt pretty bad for the kids that are there now and hopefully uh yeah when i when i get the knowledge and certifications and everything hopefully i can uh start taking my van around you know and uh yeah just uh helping the youth out any way i can yeah so what are you hoping to do you mentioned like you want to be a guide in the outdoors is that the goal yeah it's just been uh, uh i feel like that's what this path has been leading me to so i've been just going with it and just pre- Pursuing it. It's been a great adventure so far, and I'm actually going to the Outward Bounds um, backpacking and rock climbing instructor course uh, next year. So that's going to help me tremendously in not not only getting a, a job in the outdoors, but also spreading the knowledge to these youth. That it, it's a whole plan I have going, and and right now I've just been. Uh, Looking to these companies like the Sierra Club Military Outdoors and Native Outdoors and learning as much as I can. In the meantime, you you live in a van and you're a freelance graphic designer, right? Yeah. So my plan was to leave San Diego at the end of this year, but mm-hmm. I just couldn't wait. I I I kind of I got I had it with the big city life and I get it. I got a taste of the outdoors and I I needed more, so I sold all my stuff. I got enough for a down payment and I traded in my car and got got a nice little van and I probably spent like three hundred dollars building the inside basic wood and <laughs> I I just left San Diego. I said goodbye. I haven't been back since and I just pretty much been traveling to Navajo Nation for about like six months now and visiting all my childhood places or visiting places that that I haven't seen in forever really and how much they changed and even seeing new places actually that are just where I went to high school. There are so many places there that, that I came across that are magical and it's just been an amazing adventure so far living in this lifestyle. I think it's uh, it's not for everybody. <laughs> for sure but uh it's something i was meant to do and i'm comfortable with doing just maybe it's from being a marine maybe it's from growing up boarding school life or maybe being a res kid i don't know <laughs> but <laughs> all that made this very very good for me and uh like right now i'm just in my van right now actually trying to plan my next adventure so <laughs> any any ideas in mind uh actually i've been looking at this Cheska Mountains for the past, I don't know, three months. I've been driving up and down it, visiting all these sites, and I'm thinking of hiking the whole ridge line. I don't know how many miles that is, but Wow. It's called Tesca? Yeah, Cheska Mountains. And uh it's it's just beautiful up there. There's like wild horses around every corner. There's usually a few lakes up there, but uh they're having kind of like a drought, so some of them dried up. But but uh, yeah, it, it's a beautiful place. Some of uh, indigenous people still live up there, and uh, they still practice the old ways. And their livestock is all up there. So wow, it's a great place to just kind of get away and see the old ways and remind. Not not it's just it kind of reminds myself 
of why, why I'm doing this and come back down the mountain pretty much re-energized. <laughs> just healed, you know? Whenever life is just overwhelming, that's the only place that, like, my soul wants to go is just outside. Like, it, it, it is deep into the woods as I can go. Like I, it's so yeah. crazy. It, it draws you. It's like I have to get out of this freaking town <laughs> and, and just get away from every single human being for for a little bit. It's You mentioned that earlier about the youth being attracted to tech. That's a huge problem. And it's even worse, like, in a city where there's – they can go months, months of not even going into the mount, not even go, walking in grass. I know kids here – that have never been to the mountains in Denver, live in Denver their whole life. They're like 16, 17 years old, never once been to the mountains. Isn't that crazy? Yeah, yeah, I definitely see that. They don't even know what they're, like, they don't know what they don't know. They don't even realize <laughs> how epic it is, you know? Oh, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> I got a glimpse of that with my ne nieces and nephews, and yeah, it's just it's hard to uh, break that barrier. So uh, I've just been reaching out to... Uh, the kids here and that have uh, that haven't been too impacted by it so it's easier for me to get them to go outdoors because it's like let's go outside <laughs> let's go ride some horses right, or right. let's go let's go run up that mesa and hang out on the trees <laughs> like some of these kids still enjoy that and it's i'm pretty glad that i found some of them but yeah it, it, it is a hard barrier to break and i'm still figuring out a way to break that barrier <laughs> Do you feel like the Navajo Nation is underrated as like an outdoor destination for people to go and enjoy? Because it's huge. It's a huge area. Oh, yeah. I, I, I think so. Yeah. And uh, I actually started, like I said, um, I've been trying to show awareness through social media. So um, I started its Instagram called Res Roads Adventures. Res Roads? Yeah, Res Roads. And Pretty much wherever I go in my van, we write about, uh, me and my girlfriend, we write about, you know, the area and, and what it means to us, pretty much, that the net people. Even not not just that, even other places that we visited, like Cedar Mesa, we, we pretty much show awareness. And even these local areas around here, like since all these kids love social media and Instagram and stuff, we just post these awesome photos that I take and, and, and uh and show a little lesson and history behind the area. So, wow! So that's what you're doing is is you're driving around the reservation, showing just how beautiful it is, huh? Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, and I'm I'm lucky that I have I have a good eye for uh, phone photography. Really, <laughs> I don't. I have a nice camera, but I hardly use it. I, I just these phones are so they're great. <laughs> they, they're easy to work with. Yeah. So yeah, I do the and, same uh, thing. pretty much what I work with and it's easy to, easy to get out the phone when I'm hiking in these crazy places. And, uh, yeah, it, it's, it's pretty amazing out here. And definitely, uh, you want, you want to contact a Diné person before, you know, coming here and just wandering around. <laughs> so, uh, that's always the first, the first step because you, you still have to get like permits to hike here. You still have to get permits to fish and, all these things. So, yeah, we got uh, outdoor industry pretty much here. It's just uh, not as big. <laughs> By now, you certainly know who Bent Gate is. That's for a great reason. Bent Gate Mountaineering has been sponsoring the Adventure Sports Podcast almost from the beginning, and we really appreciate that. They've made it possible for all the great shows to continue coming your way. We want to say thanks by reminding you to go to them for your backcountry gear. If you live in Colorado, then just stop by their store in Golden. If not, go to bentgate.com. They have what you need from the latest ultralight gear to the tried and true classics for climbing, hiking, and camping, like Arcteryx, Hilleberg, Nemo, Western Mountaineering, and many more. Need advice? They have you covered there, too. Their staff are passionate adventurers who can offer help from their own experiences. Bentgate also hosts lots of events and speakers. Check out their website to see the schedule and to see all of their products. Help take care of the Adventure Sports Podcast by getting your gear from Bentgate Mountaineering. You know, I'm looking through your pictures, man. This is, these places are unreal. This is so beautiful. Yeah, they're not too far from the roads. They're great places, uh, and they all got history behind them. Every every picture I've taken, 
So in your opinion, how, how do we get people out here to experience these? Do it, I mean, is the permit system hard to get through? Cause these are, these are amazing pictures. Well, well, that's if you're going alone, like if you're trying to come up here alone and, uh, hang out here. Yeah. You have to do that. But if you're with a native American guy, you'll, you'll be fine. You'll be, uh, you'll be well taken care of and you'll definitely see amazing places. Like, uh, there's one company that I did some designs for who's really great. They're called Navajo Tours USA, and they pretty much do the same thing I've, I've been doing, but they actually take you out there and uh, show you these places. Wow, that's really cool. Maybe one day you'll have your own company doing that. Yeah. <laughs> um, but going back to what you were saying before, that's the reason I love Instagram because it's, you know, it's pictures. And yeah. uh, you get to, it's not a lot of like, people's opinions about stuff is just pictures so. oh yeah definitely <laughs> i kind of uh i've been so into this lifestyle lately i kind of lost track of what's been going on in the outside world <laughs> so it's been really it's been really good for me and uh yeah <laughs> really nice actually isn't it great once you once you finally break free even for a little bit it's like man this is this is <laughs> yeah, so much better exactly <laughs> so that's how I've been focusing all my time on these projects and they're all great too. So yeah, I've been this whole new person and thanks to the, thanks to the uh, mother nature pretty much. It's been a long time though, <laughs> this whole healing process. And I, I feel pretty great right now. That's great, man. I'm, I'm really happy to hear that you went to school in San Diego. Now you're a graphic designer. How, how's the, uh, how's the freelancing going? Is it, is it a hard grind every day trying to get, trying to place jobs or does it come to you uh in the beginning when i lived in san diego uh there's just so much competition i didn't have the skill set at that time to really work with an agency and i didn't have the patience to work with with uh people after i got out of the military so it kind of really clashed for me i had to leave a few jobs because i just couldn't work with people or in that environment and that's so when I really started pursuing this freelance gig and I started getting a few clients. I branded a few food trucks there that kind of kept me good, stable uh, income. It wasn't until I really came back here, I started reaching out to indigenous companies and wanting just to help any way I can, if, even if it was for free uh, or as much as they could pay me. And now I've helped so many. that I, My name's gone around and I've been pretty humbled by it that uh people have been coming to me now and i've been getting uh, you know steady designs out here and there and not only that just working on my own stuff too and trying to promote myself as a graphic designer and typographer and using that to design stickers t-shirts and yeah whatever whatever you can right yeah i i just see it as a as a skill i have now like my my main goal is to be outdoors and just uh be out there and i kind of get bored with designing sometimes but i'm, I'm it's pretty easy for me but <laughs> uh it's kind of just like a skill i have now and glad i do have it because it's been a uh, pain to bills <laughs> no i feel you man it's a grind every day trying to trying to do something you love oh yeah no matter who you are no matter where you are man it's like it don't, it don't come easy yep. because everyone would do it. Yeah. <laughs> but man, your designs are awesome. I'm looking through your portfolio right now and geez, I, yeah. I just got the logo for this podcast redesigned. I wish I'd have known about you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's just been, uh, like I said, I, I, I don't really update my website too much or anything just because I, I'm, I got this whole goal now and I'll, I'll get back to it again when I'm, if I ever settle down and park this van, <laughs> but, uh, but, uh, having too much fun moving around though, huh? Yeah. And, and luckily I get to do that and be inspired by my surroundings and that comes out into the design work too. So, and it's been great getting clients that are in the outdoor industry. So it's not that hard to whip up something that, you know, <laughs> that is the wilderness or wilderness inspired and, because I'm inspired by that stuff. <laughs> I'll give you like 10 designs. No problem. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You're, you're happy to do it. No, that makes sense. So you've been going for like six months in the van around the Navajo nation. Do you want, are you going to keep going or do you have like a, a deadline or a time frame? Oh, uh, there's no deadline. This is pretty much 
I feel it's my life now and I'm just going like anywhere <laughs> pretty much. Yesterday, I just felt like going up the mountain, took my van up this crazy route, which I shouldn't have, like only four, four by four <laughs> trucks should go up. <laughs> and I look really happy I made it up there and uh, got got the chance to see what I wanted to. And yeah, I, I only explored a quarter of the Navajo Nation so far. And there's so much more to see and so much more I got to educate people on and even educate myself. That's that's the main main part of this journey is educating myself first. And then when I'm ready, I can start sending that knowledge out. I like this lifestyle now and uh, it's been good to me. And I don't, I don't think I plan to go back into modern civilization <laughs> anytime soon. I don't blame you. Yeah. <laughs> it's overrated in a lot of ways. <laughs> right here, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that is really cool so your future so in store for you you're going to keep uh, designing you're going to hope to turn this into the ability to guide and to educate people that way and keep telling people and showing the world about the navajo nation is that going to be where you want to do all this then right there in the reservation yeah that's what uh yeah that's what i came back here for is to stay here and uh, yeah, I don't, I don't plan to move out or <laughs> leave anytime soon. Um, this is home. This is the homeland. And yeah, I do explore other places here and there, but it's all with uh, helping other veterans and helping myself too. So I always come back and uh, it's where I'm meant to be. I get it, man. I get it really connecting with a place and being content. I told my wife that not long ago. I'm like, I'm completely content exploring the american west forever <laughs> like forever yeah for never w if i when i can get in the car or i can get in our truck and drive to the grand canyon and that from here to there is the most incredible places in the whole world to me mm -hmm. i could i'm like i don't care to go to any other country i mean i'd love to but <laughs> everyone people around the world come here man and want to yeah. see those places and i think we're here like there's only so much you can do like it like you said with lifestyle mm -hmm. it's cool to go it's cool to go camping on the weekend but it's better to live a life where, around sustainability and like around being closer to what you eat and stuff that's what i feel about living out here is it's cool to go visit really awesome places around the world but i can't I just can't live there. You know, I got family here in the States and nor do I want to, but these deserts, these mountains, these rivers, I could live my whole life looking at them every day and be totally happy. It sounds like what you're doing is really just a huge research project before you build a career out of it. Yeah. You're laying the foundation. Yeah, pretty much. I, I just haven't thought of it like that. I, I just, just been having fun and, Pretty much. So. That's probably best. <laughs> yeah, that's probably best, yeah. <laughs> Just to keep having fun and letting that guide you. Yeah. But yeah, man, you're 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 gonna be an expert on the area more so than more so than anyone else. And especially with you sharing it the way you do, I don't doubt one second you're gonna be able to do what you, you want. Yeah, I hope the time comes and uh I'm just being being very patient. That's uh what I learned recently in my uh <laughs> Mother Nature's lesson to me in my recent outing is <laughs> to be patient. So, oh yeah, how how did she teach you that? Oh, uh, just on the trail, not push yourself. You gotta hmm. live in the moment. I pushed myself way too hard. Being a the marine in me came out and wanted to <laughs> go super fast and carry way too much weight. Yeah, I went down for a few seconds. So, but uh, I was fine. But anyways, there was other moments where I was alone and had this connection. I, that's what I took from that is just to be very patient. I'd say I've, I've learned my most valuable lessons outside. Well, bro, I don't want to take too much of your time, but I'm going to be following you now. I'm going to wish you, wish you the best. I love what you're doing and I love that area. But if you're ever in the Denver area, please, please uh, hit us up and yeah, I plan to connect go. somehow go back out that way again and uh because i got a taste of the rocky mountain area and <laughs> definitely need to explore more of it so uh it's been great uh talking and uh yeah so how can people find out more about you well yeah pretty much uh i'm always on instagram that's just the way i've been 
sending out my info and keeping myself relevant and and plus if they need design work that's there's my portfolio pretty much i've been using mainly instagram but you can always find me uh from that it's connected to my website email or if you're ever on Navajo Nation, look for a white van <laughs> and with three dogs in it. <laughs> three dogs are in your van? <laughs> yeah, I have three dogs. That's a lot of dogs, man. I got two dogs in my house, and I'm like, this is too much. <laughs> uh, it's been great, though. They're all they're all goofballs, but I rescued them all here from the reservation, and oh, that's awesome. They're all they're all that's they're they're my kids, so <laughs> they, it's been great. Yeah. Well, man, good luck. I can't wait to see more pictures, dude. That's because I the, the one thing I know about your pictures is they're not just pretty, but you're probably all alone, which is <laughs> yeah. awesome. You know, <laughs> yeah, it's not like here where it's like a pull off on a in a national park where there's a thousand people. You're all by yourself, yeah. which is <laughs> rad. Yeah, it might get lonely, but I don't know. <laughs> well, yeah, if you're ever out here, man. I will and take you out to some cool spots. Don't threaten me with a good time because <laughs> I will say yes. All right, man. It was good talking. All right, Vernon. Yeah, thanks so much, man. Have a good one. Yeah, you too. All right. See ya. Hey, thank you so much for listening. If you know somebody that would make a good guest on the show, or if you have a pretty cool story about the outdoors or adventure sports that you want to tell us, please call us and leave a voicemail at 812-MAIL-POD. That is 812-624-5763. Uh, you can also send us an email at info at adventuresportspodcast.com. Uh, again, it is always helpful to leave us a review on iTunes. And if you'd like to be a supporter of the show, you can give five bucks a month at patreon.com slash adventure sports podcast and links for all that stuff is also in the show notes. So thanks again for listening and y'all get out there and do something so you can be on the show one day. All right. Later. Don't forget if you want to save 20% off the best backpacking food you're ever going to eat, go to peakrefuel.com and use ASP 20 at checkout.